This module continues our discussion of the pharmacopoeia and the underlying biochemistry of drugs. Aspirin, as well as other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, work by inhibiting the catalytic activity of certain enzymes. Aspirin blocks the action of cyclooxygenase enzymes that produce the hormonal compounds called prostaglandins. Certain prostaglandins are responsible for the body's response to plain inflammation and fever. Researchers race to create nearly a dozen new candidate drugs that block cyclooxygenase 2, called COX-2, alone. This work resulted in the emergence of a new class of medicines in the late 1990s called COX-2 inhibitors. Two widely popular and heavily prescribed COX-2 inhibitors are Vioxx and Celebrex. These new super aspirins were touted as being safer and more effective than currently available NSAIDs. The premise is that since they do not act on the COX-1 enzyme, only on the COX-2 enzyme, there should be fewer gastrointestinal side effects. The reality is that they have not been proven to be more effective or safer than aspirin or ibuprofen. Prostaglandins cause a variety of effects. They produce fever and swelling, increase sensitivity of pain receptors, inhibit blood vessel dilation, regulate the production of acids and mucus in the stomach, and assist kidney functions. By preventing COX-2 enzymes from catalyzing prostaglandin production, aspirin reduces fever and swelling. It also suppresses pain researcher and so functions as a painkiller. But the drug, as do other NSAIDs, also inhibits COX-1 enzymes that primarily make hormones that maintain proper kidney function and keep the stomach lining intact. Thus, NSAID drugs are not sufficiently selective to affect COX-2 without shutting down COX-1 enzymes as well. This is the natural product penicillin, which has multiple functional groups. Can you spot the carboxylic acid, the amine, the amide, and the ether in this structure? Both receptors and enzymes work by binding molecules. Binding to a receptor causes the transmission of a single while binding to an enzyme catalyzes a chemical reaction, creating a product. In this slide, we see the active area that intersects with a membrane receptor. Drugs modify the molecule, either increasing or reducing the potency. Modification can also help target the drug to specific tissues or sites. Historically, biochemists identified the active ingredients in folk medicines. More recently, with an improved understanding of the structure and activity relationships, called SAR, Biochemists can screen libraries of randomly synthesized molecules for specific bioactivity. An organic molecule that has four different atoms or groups attached to the central carbon atom uh, exists in stereoisomers. These isomers have the same atoms and the same molecular formula, but a structured ad is a mirrored spatial arrangement. Receptors and enzymes are specific to asymmetric chiral molecules, much like a right glove is specific to a right hand. The 
body can tell chiral molecules apart. These two enantiomers may have very different uh, actions in the human body. Do you know the story of thalidomide? Steroids are a major class of hormones that bind receptors inside the cell. Other hormones bind receptors on the cellular membranes. Steroids perform many functions, including regulation of secondary sexual characteristics, reproduction and control of the reproductive cycle, regulation of metabolism, digestion of fat, and are important cell membrane components. Note how it, nature uses small changes in functional groups and specific receptors to create large physiological changes. Here we see why drugs cost so much. Safety is very important. Today we need to be on the lookout for fake drugs sold on the international market, which is unregulated and susceptible to fraud. Herbs have long been used by people to cure ills. Like drugs, the dose needs to be right or you could be poisoned. For 50 years, the debates about marijuana as a gateway drug have raged. This drug raises physiological, political, social, cultural, and economic issues. This shows us chemistry in context.